Okay, guys, we are live! Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Music YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly, um, what am I going to be today? I'm going to be your friendly, um, I guess, navigator? Uh... Guide? I don't know. Referee. referee. It was referee in, in uh, Traveler. Uh, because today we are carrying on with our ongoing campaign playing uh, Mongoose Publishing's Outstanding Traveler 2nd uh, Edition. Uh, this is the science classic. Uh, science fantasy, uh, science fantasy, science uh, fiction uh, role-playing game. A little bit of Starfinder in the brain, apparently. Uh, and uh, we are playing through uh, one of their, uh, well, a modified version of one of their pre-made modules uh, that is the Borderland Run. So if you are intending on playing the Borderland Run at some point, just be aware that today's session will contain spoilers. So uh, if you are going to play, come back after you finish playing and you'll see how we diverged from uh, the plot as written. Um, if you aren't intending on playing Borderland Run or if you've already gone through, well, then Welcome. Let me introduce you to the crew of the um, Rift Wanderer. That's right. No. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. That's us. <laughs> as soon as I said out loud, I'm like, wait, is that the 40k? <laughs> you know, that's a that's a Latin name. Um, I'll go the order. I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing? First up, oh, we've got Graham. Hi, I am Graham. I'm very excited to be back in the borderlands of Chartered Space. It's been a while, so forgive us if we fumbled slightly towards an understanding of who we are and where we're going, but I do remember that I am Dane Lovrick, a former um, kind of like uh, Black Ops Marine, um, shady past, too many, too much killing really, um, trying to escape that, but probably probably not able to, and is hitched on with this crew of ne'er-do-wells um, who now appear to be going off in towards the Aslan space with, um, well, with a very important person. Mm -hmm. Uh, next up is Jeffrey. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff, and I'm playing Alonzo Santoro. He is an author and a journalist, and he's traveling with these interesting men to uh, gain some life experience. I, and last, <laughs> but certainly not least, is James. Hi, I'm James, and I'm playing uh, Captain Ganny, captain of the Rift Wanderer. Nice. And and st student of Space Phoenix University. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a proud grad. He's got his hoodie and everything. Um, so what um, what we're going to do, for those listening at home who may be uh, watching this as part of uh, you know a, a later watch through, at the time of recording, it's been a little more than a month uh, since our last session, and it was... I think we've had a couple of uh, breaks in the campaign over the summer. Um, at the time of recording, it's October, uh, nearing the end of October, and uh, we had missed a couple of sessions as well. Jeff has missed um, all of the summer as well, so what we're gonna do yeah. just is to get um, ourselves all caught up in what's happened sort of in the last leg of this campaign. So um, if you have been following us through, apologies for the, uh, the recap, but uh, that is the reason we're gonna go through that. So guys. Our campaign started with you guys on the water world of Argona. Uh, you were then brought, or not from Argona, from um, Spurl, uh, the well, water world of Spurl. You went from, and let me, uh, let's do a little bit of a montage here. Here we go. So you're on the water world of Spurl. Uh, you then went from uh, Spurl to the ice world of Argona, where you were hired on to perform what it was presented as a fairly straightforward task. And I think I've flipped that over so that it would look like you're going out of the system. <laughs> there we go. Then there's heading into Argona. Do you guys recall what task it was? Excuse me. Your employer was a guy named Joaquin Strusum, who mm -hmm. looks like, where is he? Where are you, Joaquin? Uh, 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 uh. Here he is. I mean, what could go wrong with a, with 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 a with an employee like that? I mean, that's, that's, that's the question <laughs> I ask myself. Captain Ganny had dealt with Joaquin before and had uh, uh, run some. Uh, relatively, uh, you know, uh, incident-free missions for him. Do you guys have any recollection of what uh, Joaquin had hired you to do? 
Hey, yeah, we were... <laughs> that was our main mission, right? We, we, we had four months, I think, to pick up a somebody and I think you understood it them. as a package before. That package, okay. Oh, right, Pick yeah. Pick up a package okay, and deliver sense. it to somewhere in the Aslan higher up. Yep. Uh, you were going to go to that? Gibraltar Station mm -hmm. uh, in the... Oh, boy. Um, mm, 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 in urine system. Pick up from there and then deliver it to a planet uh, in the um, in the Aslan Hyret. What could be simpler? And so much time and such easy pay. Uh, while on Argona, I think uh, Alonzo did have a uh, a run in. Oh, you did have a bit of a, of of, a, of an incident on the way to Argona as well. Your passengers ended up being a little bit more. Uh, hmm interesting than uh, what you thought for, or than initially seemed to be the case. Yeah, there was some, um, I suppose what we could call him a, a historical figure almost in the uh, workers' rights movement that um, we were interested why he was coming back at this stage when, um, yeah, yeah, and so that also led to quite a lot of problems on our way in. Not yeah. least uh, a possible assassination attempt. Yeah, which uh, uh, led to you guys uh, having to outrun pirates on your way to um, uh, Argona. And, and that was touch and go. Yeah, and then on Argona... You may recall that Alonzo made a friend. Yes, a wonderful oh. friend. That friend so. did uh, <laughs> relieve Alonzo of uh, his, you know, material concerns. And <laughs> Dane very quickly recovered uh, said lost materials from oh, a, wow. uh, a group of muggers. It wasn't nice. Yep. You then left and... Uh, on the way, let's see here, when you arrived in the Inurin system uh, and you were making your way into um, towards Gibraltar Station, you came across a ship that was in a bit of trouble. Hmm. There's a name, Sam's Leaky Bucket. Ring a bell. Oh, yeah, okay. I kind of remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Captain Ganny's uh, cautionary tale of uh, the outcome from uh, Captain Samuel Kedgy's career. Uh, do you recall what happened that led him stranded without a operating um, engine? He got boarded by some security company who um, arrested his all his passengers and uh, left him including his engineer yeah. and left him with a broken down ship and uh, floating yes so he uh, that was the first clue that you had that uh, some someone um, or it seems that some folks are looking for someone uh, and willing to pay quite uh, handsomely for it oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sam or Captain Sam also had indicated that he didn't believe that it was his crew that they were looking for but they took him because, I mean, it wasn't his crew. It was his passengers who were doing some, like, work for travel. Um, yeah. I think I think he also doesn't believe in a maintenance schedule for his engines. So um, that didn't really help, you know? No. <laughs> uh, and then when you arrived on uh, Gibraltar Station, uh, you guys, in addition to meeting, I know this is um, uh, Hernan's claim, uh, illustration in the background, Gibraltar Station was just a separate, um, a separate uh, space station uh, in and of itself. There's a couple of people that you met with, one of which was Amalde, a uh, Varger employee of the company that you were to pick up the package from. And that was when you learned that there might be more to this package than you expected. Too much more. Probably. Too much more. <laughs> You also came, I think it was Dr. Ilias who first made the 
acquaintance of Owen Chen and <laughs> Mr. Grookson. Oh, lovely. I love them. I love them. What do you recall about those two fine fellows? There was nothing fine about them. That's what I recall. Nothing <laughs> at all. They were heavies. They were just simple goon-like heavies. I'm trying to remember who they worked for, who we thought they worked for, but they were definitely onto us. And they reflected, perhaps, as per the pirates, a continuing interest, shall we say, in our package, which we were about to meet. Um, and certainly security also at the starport was high. It was mm -hmm. locked down. They were looking to prevent anyone really getting out. Um, yeah. It's going to be a problem for us. Um, nobody wants this package to get to the Aslan Hirate is the bottom line. There was also an interesting bit of um, like bad luck and good luck. Bad luck in the sense that the um, the package or who turned out to be the person um, seems to have been deported from Gibraltar Station. But one of the upsides to that is they were traveling under a pseudonym that happened to be a Varger word. Uh, and that seemed to be overlooked by uh, some of the mm. folks. So you were able to leave Gibraltar Station uh, without much uh, incident or much further incident and arrive on Hernan's claim. Yeah. On Hernan's claim, you made the acquaintance of a young Aslan girl who seemed to be serving as the ears for someone else. What do you recall happening on, I think this is what, after arriving here, Jeff, is where you uh, uh, you were not able to attend. I met this family. Oh, okay. And that's when, the, that's when, I, that's when I last played. Right. And that's when um, the doctor made an impression on a certain other Aslan who seemed to be oh, yeah. spying on while you guys were meeting with the um, Aslan proprietor of a robot shop. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of caution. A lot of caution, understandably. Mm -hmm. Because our package, the Aslan, is, has been, well, we subsequently found out, has been uh, exiled. Is that too strong a word? Um, maybe that's too strong a word, but certainly... Um, has been removed from the political scene, as far as we know. Yeah, and so what you know thus far is that he is connected with one of the clans, and that seems to be the clan that was financing the transporting of him back. You know that his clan has enemies, for sure. You've seen photos or vids of him leading a bunch of Aslan troops, and you'd heard through the scuttlebutt before, uh, I, I'm not sure you guys have expressly made this connection, but in the time uh, that you spent on Argona and then again on Gibraltar Station, you did hear about a relatively recent incident on a planet called Aaron Seer, where a, um, an army of Aslan led by a uh, Ihate, uh, a like second son, uh, of a Aslan chieftain or or um, or noble uh, attacked the planet of uh, Aaron Seer unsuccessfully. They were repelled, and there was talks about you know the skies being filled with Aslan troops and them only barely being driven off. Uh, yeah, I don't recall you discussing that. Uh, whether you've expressly connected him to that incident or not, but your characters would certainly be aware of both of those incidents. You also know that he is being hunted by his enemies. Uh, that uh, part of the reason you've got such a long leeway... Uh, well, for one thing, there is a deadline for him to uh, 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 be back on the planet, apparently, but also um, he is being hunted. What else did you guys learn uh, from him or from the others? I know that uh, one of you shared a meal with him as well. Was that you, Captain Ganny, or...? 
No, I think there was three or four of us went to the yeah. family's house. Hey, you did, and then but then they... you guys also, some of you also shared a meal with him on the Rift Wanderer as well. And there was some me. chatting. No, okay. It may have been the doctor uh, then. Yeah, it may have been. So, yeah, and you learned that his uh, given name is Tila Toral, and that uh, he is apparently a uh, an Aslan of Station. So that was the person who you met on Hernan's claim. What happened after the meal? Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that happened was, um, I think mostly by accident, but that seems to be the nature of Don Loverick's life, really, that um, he sort of got into a kind of a duel with uh, him. That was after you got him off of Hernan's claim. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We had um, to get him onto the ship, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. So this was... Somehow... Oh, go ahead, James. Yeah. I don't think I was there, but somehow we ended up buying a robot from the family. Yes. So we got a, um, a cargo loader, isn't it, or something like that? Yeah. There's a cargo loader that was purchased, and to justify sort of the time you spent with uh, him, and then thanks to some fancy flying on the part of your pilot, you guys met up with um, uh, Tila Toral on one of the canyons near Hernan's claim, because it is a planet, um, and wearing a Aslan uh, spacesuit, he was able to go outside, meet up with you guys, and then you left the planet with uh, hopefully uh, none, no one who may be watching any the wiser. Um, after you left, you guys set a destination for Tech World, and there was some discussion of where to go next, partly influenced by um, uh, by the input of um, Tila Toro himself. So in urine was where you guys were. And then the discussion was, was whether how to get a roundabout way to getting yeah. it to uh, Tyok, which I think is your eventual destination. Yeah. You do need to stop off at the sink and the world. You only learned of that after uh, Tila Toro got on board. He said there are two matters that need to be addressed before you go. And the thought was that one of the more dangerous things is going to be when you make the, the jump from um, the... I can't remember what this is called here. Uh, Rift's Edge Cluster, I think. Uh, to the Dranaxi chain, which is over here. One of the things he had suggested is a stop on Ergo, a uh, red zone world, but one that pla that uh, pirates routinely travel to. So there is mm -hmm. an actual, you know, um, there is a, a fairly large uh, place there. You still have... Um, uh, or before going there, though, you had already picked up uh, cargo for Tech World when you arrived on, on um, Hernan's claim, which led to you all traveling to Tech World. And that was last session when we arrived there. And Tech World. Well, Tech World's a giant planet. Tech World is a is a planet with really only one um, one place on it. Let me. Oh, I forgot a book. Everyone have a drink. <laughs> now I diligently stacked up all what I thought was all the books I would need, and then I forgot my uh, Guide to the Trojan Reach. Mm. Okay. And uh, since we're uh, refreshing our uh, memories anyway, 
Jeff, I'll read you off because you did not uh, see the arrival on Tech World. So, Tech World. Uh, the first colony here, a Soleimani outpost, was destroyed by the Sindalan Empire's punitive armada. The world lay empty for hundreds of years until the Jidico founded the construction of a starport here to encourage Imperium hirate trade through the borderlands. Jidico, we just want to make friends. <laughs> to reduce the cost of constructing the starport, they contracted uh, contracted with um, renegades from the technologically advanced world of Newman in the Gazulan subsector. While the world of Newman has the highest level of technology of any world in the whole sector, its use is heavily restricted by the Shield Church. The heretics were easy to take Judico's uh, eager, forgive me, eager to take uh, Judico's offer of a world of their own and funding to develop their science. Jidico, we only want to learn. The human population of Tech World is around 4,000. The robot population is around a million and rising, depending on how one tallies distributed intelligence computers with numerous slave bodies. Experiments in using nanotechnology, cloning, and other technologies of questionable legality are ongoing, and Tech World is attracting increasing numbers of researchers who wish to pursue lines of inquiry not permitted in the Imperium. Jidico refuses to put pressure on the tech world rulers to rein in their scientific experimentation, claiming that its contract with the tech world government begins and ends with a starport. <laughs> Jidico, what we don't see, we don't know, but we'll profit from. <laughs> the Tech World Starport is a minor wonder of the subsector. The Starport is a huge black ovoid that reconfigures itself dynamically to cope with rising or falling traffic. The interior walls are actually curtains of a smart bioplastic that can move and reshape themselves to create larger or smaller landing bays and warehousing. Every visitor is assigned a guide robot programmed to their needs, and security is assured by keying everything to the user's genetic code. So that, Jeffrey, is where you guys have come. Dropped off some supplies. I think you guys made a tidy profit from this uh, this particular yeah. run as well. And um, the decision, I think, was made to hide Tilatoro on the ship to leave him on the ship while everyone else came out the little yeah. robot you see on the uh screen there that is the uh the what would you call it concierge bot his holographic display only comes up when he is active and it's like emoticons like um quite obvious expressions of human interactions without looking human or even like into the uncanny valley area at all. While you were here, uh, Dr. Abdel or Dr. Ilias did <coughs> come across a, <coughs> a name he recognized among the researchers active on Tech World. And that happened to be his former partner uh, when they did work on a trying to I guess undo the damage done by atomic and biological and virological warfare uh, among a genetically engineered pharaonic uh, cast of rulers on a planet. His former partner uh, is apparently active here and Dr. Ilias received a message from him and a payment of one credit. And while he sent the credit back, he did take a look at the information that was sent. And it seems as if there is some very curious research that his former partner is doing that um, that happens to um, incorporate some of Dr. Ilias's uh, own work, but also some tantalizingly uh, unknown factors certainly beyond what Dr. Ilias estimated his partner could do. The rest of the crew, while that was going on, went and enjoyed some drinks, had some uh, much needed downtime, and uh, Dane uh, was doing his best to learn how to socialize. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, 
I just scaring people generally. <laughs> generally, it was a little unnerving uh, to see him doing that. I didn't go back through the rest of the. Uh, th I don't think you guys have set up a a cargo uh, for your next destination because I think in part it was undecided as to where you were going to go next or is where you were going to be delivering. One thing we did talk about was how you do not need to go directly to wherever it is you want to deliver your cargo. You just need to deliver the cargo. You don't need to necessarily be going directly there. Uh, so if, for instance, you wanted to make a pit stop off else uh, at one place and then drop off at another, you could certainly do that. Do I have that wrong, Graham? Did you guys sort out your cargo yet? Yeah, um, I, think we, I think that was yeah. the last thing, isn't it? We it was. We up had Techworld to Hilfer. If, what I'll do is I'll publish our accounts at some point so you can you can have them as an asset to show. Oh, okay. Um, tech World to Hilfer, we had cargo and mail. We decided not to go for any passengers. Right, 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 right. Okay, so let's see here. And we had mail mail 20 tons and freight of 39 tons. Okay. Um, and so effectively we've got a destination of Hilfer for what we have on board, and that will net us 162,400 credits when okay. we get there. Okay. And I'm so used to snapping to the center here. <laughs> I forgot, I don't have actual hexes set up here. Um, so what is, uh, let me think here, is there is there anything else that I have missed? I know that uh, Dane had a really thrilling hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, struggle yeah. with Tila Toral that he very... It was closer than I think what Teal the Toro may have expected uh, from from you. Right. Um, it was a lot better than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I think some XP may have been spent on uh, unarmed yeah. <laughs> afterwards. Uh, anything I've missed uh, from my summary here? Nope. Sounds Roughly pretty. where we are, I think. Yeah. Okay. Then... What are we doing today, guys? Anna says hi. I don't know who she's yelling at. So, is it the case? Well, it's gone now. Uh, where are we going? Where are we going and can we go? You're going to Helfer. There is a... Yeah. Uh, here we go. Let's jump to. Um, it takes us into the... Tlaiwaha subsector. Yeah. Um, so we're heading out of Borderlands. Um, we have cargo to drop there. Um, so far, so innocuous. Um, there was talk about us going to Ergo, but I think we all wanted to just eschew the red zone and head towards Hilfer. You know, the faster you go, the more likely you are to get discovered. So, by all means. Wow. Hilfer is a hot desert world that was once part of the Kingdom of Drenax. The rebellion cost Hilfer dearly as the planet lost the technology to maintain the water reclamation technology that kept the desert at bay. But. I mean, you know, um, I can just give you my assessment, but um, as a crew, um, if you want to head towards a red zone pirate world, um, you know, then we can. Uh, the captain <laughs> is is with Dane Lovrick on this one and isn't going to be lured into a suicide mission by the referee. <laughs> <laughs> You're assuming that this the, isn't true. I, I want to, to be the clear. Red world. Come to the. <laughs> I want you to be clear that this decision is made by you, so whatever consequences <laughs> flow therefrom will be on your heads. Oh yeah. Um, Alonzo, what do you make of all that's happened? Well, clearly danger is following us in some peripheral way, so. I think the safest path is prudent, but, you know, pulling a little bit of danger is, is kind of what he's hoping for, honestly, in this trip. 
the adventure is why he's here so he's a little torn um like how dangerous is this red planet i don't know the world very the world very well depends how well you uh can handle yourself i suppose there are um factions of barons on that planet that all want to mm. please travelers um that uh, that arrive on there too but there is no real like overall um you know law uh or whatnot there's certainly not a planet-wide kind of protection uh it's also a ideal destination for pirates so you know Hmm. Yeah. Pirates who, who prey on people going there when pirates use that base uh, are very likely to earn the wrath of all of their um, comrades. So the likelihood of you being preyed on by pirates going there is actually uh, so, you know, sh a bit lower than what you would expect. If pirates start preying on themselves going there, people will stop going there. So it's sort of a, a place where they would likely not... Uh, B. That's not to say that being on the planet is safe. Right. So. I mean, other than a juicy chapter in your forthcoming blockbuster novel, <laughs> what's, the, I, what's, what's the advantage for us? None, really. Okay. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Uh, So, you know, if we want to avoid it, you know, he wouldn't put up a uh, fight. He wouldn't and complain. The, yeah, I mean, going to the pirate world, somehow this story feels a bit like the double bluff. But if we go there, they won't think that we're going there. And therefore, they, you know, they won't raid us because they want us to go visit there. So they won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, and to be clear, uh, what uh, Tila Toro's concern is, is that they uh, know that he's going to be arriving in or trying to make his way towards the Liwaha or the, um, yeah, the Dranaxi chain. Mm. So when you make your, your jump there, uh, the more of a trail that can be followed, uh, the more likely it, it is that his enemies, they do not have unlimited resources. They are subject to time and tide like all you guys are, but, um, the more indirect, the more unlikely it seems as if it's your vessel that is transporting him, the less likely they are to be tweaked to the fact that he is indeed on board. But I think it's going to Hilfer is, uh, we picked it because it's kind of a, the indirect route because you'd need a jump three ship to get, if you're in a rush to get to Teoc. Mm -hmm. If you were trying to go there, you'd go to Pal or Sink. So would that not so be the obvious way that people would go to try and avoid detection? It's a question. Again, of we're into the triple bluff here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, but what we should really do is just go straight to Teok because that will. I will tell you on a mechanical, ba uh, like on a, on a um, gameplay uh, perspective, like there are modifiers that go into this stuff, but nothing is decided by the module. It's pretty cool in that sense that there isn't okay. a like, oh, you go here and you step on the rake. Well, there's okay. everything factors in in chances so uh you're absolutely if you're feeling like well every decision is a fucking terrible decision you're not wrong that's the, the you know module as designed just everything has a factor on the likelihood oh, okay. of outcomes right i mean okay yeah all right so if, if the route really is going to define a little bit about what we encounter and how difficult it proves to be which is a surprise because of the nature of jump space and the vagaries of space travel. But if that's the case, we could make a case of going via um, um, Ergo, um, even if we were to um, jump and gas giant refuel and then take the trip from Ergo to Hilfer. I don't know if, if that seems like a uh, a better way of doing it. I mean, we don't have to actually well, and to uh, be go clear, to the Ergo main system. It doesn't. What? Like, I'm not going to uh, give the. Let me just move us over sure. here. The the necessarily the chances uh, of like how they go, but you can in, infer safely that the more delay that you put in, the more you sort of 
seem like you're not, you know, making a, a beeline for that area. The We're flying more casual, right? Exactly. I don't know. Fly casual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the the more that like there's no guaranteed like and now we don't get caught. There's also no like and now we get caught. Everything will play into a chance of uh, there being because I mean they're doing the same thing too. We talked about I think on Wednesday. Have you guys played uh, uh, Scotland Yard before the board game? No? No. So it's, no. it's a fucking it's great, so. uh, like, um, asymmetrical board game of where one play, person plays Mr. X and everyone else plays investigators. Mr. X has to reveal himself on the map of London once every, like, six turns. And all you need to do to win is be on a square where Mr. X is. But Mr. X makes secret moves for all those intervening turns. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a great board mm. game. I, I fucking loved mm. it as a kid. Um, but the um, that's a similar kind of thing here. They are, you're absolutely right, Dane, that they're operating under some of the same limitations too. So, for instance, when you guys left those um, rent investigators behind, they didn't seem to have their own ship, which means they need to hire onto something and they need to be subject to that, yeah, to, yeah. you yeah. know, whatever. So... Uh, and their communications, likewise, can only travel at the speed of, um, you know, a, uh, a a boat, whoever their masters may have been. So, but what you can infer is that everything you do to delay uh, the eventual jump to a more dangerous location is going to diminish the likelihood of them finding you. And every step that has happened thus far has likewise affected that. Okay. So well, we could go to Ergo with a full cargo into the only red beacon pirate uh, system in the entire sector. But, um, I, you know, I, it, it, <laughs> um, I, old history tells me that's a really bad thing to do, well, but I'm, I'm prepared now, to do it. Let me throw some, uh, I, I've done a lot to, to sort of stoke this up. Let me now throw some <laughs> cold water on that. <laughs> if someone there uh, decides that, uh, you know, or figures out that this, that, that there is a bounty on your guy uh, and is there, there is very little to prevent them from deploying as much force as they have available to try and take him. Yeah. So, yes, um, Ergo is a, a very uh, uncontrolled place and the likelihood of him being spotted is, is probably quite low and the people who are moving through there are more likely smugglers or pirates looking for a rest or, you know, um, travelers looking for a thrill. But if someone does realize uh, or if uh, someone has figured out, you know what, maybe they're going to be this foolish and go there, then... There's like very little to... there. You can't rely on like, well, they're not going to draw pistols and start shooting on the space station the way you could on Gibraltar Station. Uh, and I've got to think that it, it, whoever's trying to intercept our cargo and is hiring people, that's probably where they're hiring the people from. <laughs> uh, less so. You want like rent investigators are licensed than whatever else. Um, they're... It, you would more go to Ergo to hire a smuggler than you would anything else. Uh, if you okay. want to get an assassin, there are more qualified and professional people you can find in, you know, um, the Aslan have a long tradition of assassins. Ditto for the, you know, the um, uh, the Imperium. Um, if you want thugs, you go. You would go to Ergo. If you want okay. assassins or bounty hunters, you would probably be looking elsewhere. Okay, well, the best thing I've got just, for Ergo is if we, just, we go there on the basis that we are exploring trade possibilities. Even Ergo has got needs, and it's probably, you know, luxury goods and weapons, but, I mean, you know, whatever. Let's do this. Uh, we, Captain Gann, yeah. let me just take a look at the Just a thought, though, if we, if we want to just be delay things so that we mm. burn up time, why don't we just mm. head out far from uh, Tech World yeah. and wait? Yeah, you could go to. Yeah. You could also go to Spurl. You could go back to some other place. Like there, we could just stay in deep space, couldn't we, for a week? Yeah, if you wish. 
we could could do that i mean that's if, if you're just trying to burn time it avoids the going to the pirate planet system yeah because if you go to spell then you you're going to again attract attention then you're going to come back to tech world so that's two weeks lost mm -hmm. I mean, my suggestion is our cargo is for Hilfer. um and that's where we have to take it we can't generate more cargo until we've offloaded what we have um so my thinking would be go to Hilfer, offload um and then head off somewhere random you know head off somewhere out of the way uh, we don't have to then from there you know zone in on tyok in some kind of way get, get get through to the world and then you know bounce into tyok we could um hey we could visit the capital yeah we could go Salt. to yeah we go to dry drenax trying to I'm told it's great there there's there's a you know <laughs> a lot King of Brian blessed yeah, aspirational. Yeah. Right, aspirational. like do a do a nice loop around to where we want to go. Yeah. That's not yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. work round. Mm. That I like that. I'll, I'll also uh, note that uh, for some ships that make the jump between uh, the uh, Rift's Edge uh, cluster and, and the Dranaxi chain, they make use of um, fuel bladders. Uh, so if you've got, only got to jump one ship, you can still do it. You just need to have a fuel bladder. You jump. Then you have to wait a week, or you you jump yeah. a week in transit. You arrive, you fuel yourself up with the bladder, and then make the second jump. So it's not unusual for it to be a two week period between Tech World and Hilfer, Tech World and Paul, Tech World and Sync. So the mail arriving a week late, not a not a big deal. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then, is that the plan to uh, go? Oh, did I? Oh, you guys got to have another drink. I forgot <laughs> another book. <laughs> well, I'm only having coffee today, so it's not too dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just go and get one in a minute. <laughs> uh, well, I'll wait for jump space. Um, okay, this so one I don't blame for. myself for. I saw it and I'm like, ah, no, nah, I'm not going to eat it today. Yeah, you will. Madison. So there were rules in um, uh, High Guard about powering down, about making yourself uh, um, less detectable to other ships. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I was going to, sorry, before I do that, grab. grab oh. You know, I don't mind at all that they uh, they didn't put a um, an actual character sheet in the book because I mean nowadays people are either using PDFs or they're printing off character sheets from things. But if you're running a skill based game um, and you don't have a character sheet in the back of it, that the skill list should be on the fucking GM screen or summarized somewhere else in your rule book. And that is not the case here. There we go. So Hilfer, um, I notice Hilfer does not have a gas giant. Uh, Hilfer does not. You would need to pay. Uh, it has a what is it? B star B board? class. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you certainly could pay to to get up. The B class is going to be comparable to what you saw in Spurl or yeah. Argona, for that matter. Um. What is their, their tech level is a six on the planet. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Captain Gandhi, yeah, what do you have for your profession skills? I am, um, I'll check, but I'm a, a minor. Oh, minor is your... Yeah. You, you don't have anything well, related to profession. Navy or... Well, no, I mean, I am ex-Navy and ex... But my professional skill is salvage crew. Okay. Well, okay, nice. So why don't you give us then just a... A flat social role, please. 
Two. Oh, uh, also, before we do that, guys, each roll a d6. Let's see how much luck you have to play with today. I forgot to do oh, that yeah. at the odds end. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, we even had luck in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh! That may be very oh, true, Jeff. Amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, it was amazing. meant to be. And Dane, where is yours? Oh, oh really? I get to roll as well. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, no, everyone. Yeah, yeah. All of you guys get to roll a d6. Yeah, it's like a Go community. Here. Yeah, and we all add it together. All, all right, right. So you have a whopping six luck to play with today. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, so Captain know. Ganny. I have full faith in you guys. That faith was terribly misplaced. <laughs> well, I, I'm a minus one on social, so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which makes sense. You're not a particularly chatty Kathy. So you don't know. Um, yeah, you well, know. Social, I mean. social isn't social skill. It's your social status. Right, but there isn't. It a, a, there, lower class. It's the skill that's used with a lot of those chatty chatty things. So. Oh, man. Let's see here. Um, well, with Hilfer, I mean, when you've been to one B five five zero seven seven A hyphen six world, you've been to them all, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I was getting to roll for is see whether you've got um, any uh, experience with the folks on um, uh, what do you call it? on um, Ergo. And all right, yeah, I, no. I, I think you have a, it's which it sounds like you would have been your inclination anyway, but you have assiduously avoided that planet thus far, <laughs> perhaps wisely. It's very good liquor, apparently, but that's about it, yeah. yeah. So, then, uh, where is, is that the plan? Then, guys, we're gonna hang in orbit for uh, a week and then make the jump to PAL. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. to uh, Helfer. Yeah, keep the air, the air purifiers and the heaters on just to keep ourselves warm out in the colder space, and then we're just going to do a jump. Yeah, okay. So let's do this. I have good news, guys. I did remember to grab the book that has the uh, make the jump interesting uh, encounter table on it. So uh, wait, and to be clear, we don't we don't have any other passengers right now, correct? Correct. Yeah, just our guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we can also take the time to do plot the jump and everything. Yeah. Take tons yeah. of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. So you get the extra bonus. That's right. All right. Um, Is that in the uh, high guard, did you say? Uh, I thought it was, but I think I might be confusing it with um, sure. the uh, rogue trader uh, things. All know. right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although, no, here we go. There's stealth ships. Savvy stealth ship captains know how to go dark after distancing themselves from an opponent, shutting down most or all systems that allow them to be detected. Uh, this gives the stealth ship a significant advantage in combat, enabling them to select when to engage an opponent, if indeed they want to at all. Well, that's if you have stealth technology. You guys have stealth technology on this ship, right? Just like your ample weaponry on the ship? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's a real I've piece. got my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Um... We've got a strange camouflage painting on the outside. Fake <laughs> 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 hope. Let's use, uh, let's see here. I think it's probably a sensors check to, uh, to try and, uh, uh, and gauge like, you know, what level of, um, of power, or maybe it's engineering. Engineering power, here we go. Anyone have engineering power? Oh yeah. Nice. Which Why don't one you get, would you like? Uh, engineering <laughs> power, power, power yeah. plant. Engineering power uh, at uh, using intelligence, please. I have no engineering. 
and you know what we'll do as well this actually works out nicely but so for those listening at home um the wow it's incredible uh, Dr. Ilias's player, uh, David, wasn't able to make it today because he's trapped with uh, the traveling and the uh, if terrible weather conditions that are hitting uh, uh, England right now or the UK right now. And uh, this, the one week of travel gives us the window for if you, if you spent an extra day or two on uh, Tech World, it's not going to make a difference. I mean, if one of you are killed by the war bots that we uh, saw last session, then, I mean, I guess we'll have to do a little bit of retroactive uh, changing, but I'm sure you guys will be fine. I have my, my money. Well, I have my money mostly on you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, all right. So then that's incredible. So you, um, Captain Gandhi, this appears to have not been the last or the first time you have uh, tried to just hide your ship in the blackness of space. Necessary thing of a scout sometimes. Okay. And then since he is looking for something interesting to do, uh, Jeffrey, why don't you give us a 1d6 roll, please? Yes. Mm. Come on. The good stuff. All right. Then would you kindly give us a 2d6 roll? Oh, it's escalating. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> It's okay. a random encounter to me. But... And... That's interesting. All right. So <laughs> now, uh, last one, uh, Jeff, would you give us a 1d7 roll, please? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> this is the next two hours of gameplay, guys. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Stressing the uh, ability of... Uh, Roll 20 to roll different size of dice. You now roll at 36.24 uh, uh, D-sided. Uh, no, I'm okay. um, And so Dr. Elias normally uh, manages the comms and the sensors. Who do you think among you is monitoring it uh, when a message comes in? Comms. Anybody else? I've got sensors, so... I guess right. be electronic. Is it communications? Electronics. Yeah, I have sensors a little bit too. Sensors. Okay. Oh well, if you've got sensors, then uh, you excellent. Do them, then. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're probably busy with uh, more important things. <laughs> okay. Well, and you guys all need to sleep at some point too. So you have a week of, uh, of further training, or you know that you guys will are expecting to have as you're just waiting in in space here. Um. Alonzo, it seems like there's been a lot more just sitting around and waiting than what you, uh, you know, than what you were expecting, perhaps, from your wild adventure among the stars. Right. And it is, um, let me think here. So it is the first day that you guys have uh, drifted off into the tech world system and found a place to kind of um, to hide when Alonso, you get mm, you know, I want to grab one more thing because I want to make sure I don't get this wrong I have one more book, I should just bring all the goddamn books in, in one go my goodness Like most other games are just the uh, the Mayday version of Space Combat. Oh, okay. What, what is that? I'm not even sure what that is. It was it was a um, boxed game that came out right near the beginning. So it's just oh. the space from the classic, but it's um, it's all vector stuff on a hex map. So it wouldn't oh. work so well on Roll Twenty, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, it really does kind of do the. It's two D, but it kind of does the physics. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what, uh, you are, um, 
Uh, you're sitting in the oh, let's go over to the ship actually, since we're going to be on here. There we go. You know, whatever issue we had on Friday uh, with the uh, chugging and whatnot, like it's gone by Saturday, gone today. I'm not seeing any of the same. Mm -hmm. it, um, where it's lagging and lagging. So you're sitting in the bridge on your own, Alonso. What do you think you're doing with your time as you're sort of, you know, monitoring the basics? And basically what it is is like, you know, you've been told like, if this light comes on, if this light comes on, if this light changes color, come and wake me up. Right. Um. I think he's, uh, he pick, I picture him as the kind of person that, you know, when I was a kid, I used to buy, my parents would get me these travel books, right? And they would just be like, have all these puzzles and crosswords and little things to do. I imagine he's got like some kind of crossword puzzle book or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's like sitting and doing something very old school like that, very 20th century, because, you know, that's the kind of stuff that he loves. And it's yeah. probably like trivia about, you know, the old world or whatever mm, and so okay. he's probably sitting there enjoying this sure. crossword book so you're uh, going away when um there is a there's a strange kind of like squawking sound that comes through on the almost like feedback of, like a mic too close to a speaker kind of thing um and yeah, I can't remember. You're trained in sensors? Uh, yes. Okay. With one level in sensors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then at least... Well, that's computers, isn't it? It's a subscriber. Electronics. Electronics. Uh, electronics. Yeah, okay. Electronics, yeah. Okay. So you know uh, for certain that that... Um, it should not make that sound. Right. Um, would you give us a... You're not trained in electronics comms, right? Yep. Comms, computers, and sensors. Give us a comms check, oh. please. Electronics is sort of my thing, actually. Mm. Oh, Holy yeah. shit. Oh, oh, yeah. Amazing. So here's what you, you actually, we, we can <laughs> jump a couple steps forward here because what your the degree of success of that is like a six. Is it margin of success in this game or is it degrees? It's, it's what you rolled minus the... Target. No, no, I, I remember the, the nomenclature. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hmm. Which is it? Yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think like, MOS, I think, is GURPS that we were playing recently. Uh, uh, so that's why it's let's my have a look. brain is. Uh... Let's just call it done better than. Done, done better. better than by six. Uh -huh. Well, you know, it's, I, I just from past experience, I'm just, it's, it's going to save me some uh, comments. It's an effect. The effect results. There we go. Effect. Yeah. Okay. The effect, effect results. Result. There we go. Thank you. Sixty-one core rulebook. Someone watching this two years in the future is now slowly deleting their comment. <laughs> <laughs> So what, um, with, with that d degree of effect or um, effect result, yep. what um, what you can tell is the squawk that comes in. This is not, there's, there's a couple of things that can cause this. One of them is if there is interference like jamming or something like that. Um, but this particular tone, you know, is not that. There's also the possibility that um, there's just degrading in the in the in the message like it's something that has run with interference and whatnot which means that you may only get a partial message uh and that's possible the other is uh that when the when you receive a signal that is either too powerful or not of a kind that your ship is designed to sort of take in and because of the expansive you know uh the, the cent centuries of experience of dealing with interplanetary species and encountering wide varieties of different things and building on the technology of other advanced species it's got to be really obscure for something to not be recognized by the um by the the sort of the comms uh, as a, a signal comes in but this is an unknown format. Oh. Yeah, and as you look at this message that's been 
uh, received. There's a couple, I think with that, why don't you can ask me two questions about this. And then you can also try and take other steps to learn other things, but you rolled quite well. Right. Yeah. Um, like, so does it seem military to me? What I can tell you is that it is not a encoded uh, or otherwise cryptographic message. That's not the nature of the interference that you heard. It's also not, um, at least not in any one that you are, any format that you're familiar with. If it was a cryptographic thing from say a hostile force, you may still receive it because again, your ships, the the format for receiving the, you know, whatever the, the method is for transmitting uh, messages, there's centuries of opportunity for the you know uh, human sphere to sort of tweak their technology such that they can actually receive from anybody, whether it's from the you know Zodani or the Droin or the Kakri or whatever. It comes in, your ship can figure it out, even if you don't understand the the um, the language of it. That's not the case here. That's one question. One more question. You can feel free okay. to um, get the insight from your crew if you'd like. Yeah, I think at that point when I, he would probably, you know, like you said, wake them up or whatever and like, okay, hey, guys, this is something we need to check out. Okay. So what do you go? You guys arrive on the bridge and yeah. you still have your free question. So before you guys have to take any other steps uh, to make rolls or whatever else, you can decide what your question is going to be. Um, is it? A, sorry, this is not a question for you, Kevin. This is a question internally to the crew. Just to check. <laughs> Before I do the classic, you only had three wishes. Exactly like uh, that scene yeah. from uh, the D and D film. So, is it? From what you've got so far, Alonzo, is it is it uh is it like a is it like a sensor sweep check? Is there any um, payload in that that's got communications in that we can decipher anything like that? And are we sure it's communications? Well, exactly. It's, it's not like a um, you know with a radar ping not, or a sonar it's not a ping. single GK or something like that. So that one wouldn't require a, a roll. Um, it may very well be some other form of, if it is a transmission that is like a active, uh, sensor ping, uh, it's most certainly in a format that you've like, it would be so fucked up for it to come through on the comms then. Okay. You'd be alien okay. to anything that, uh, the common you know accepted knowledge yeah. of the different species would uh, would have this far that doesn't mean it's impossible certainly but uh that would be it feels like a question it, 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 i'm not asking yet um but it's um it, it feels like it's comms then rather than senses it's something that's that's it's a package that's coming to us maybe maybe broken up um I think so. Something that's trying yeah. to communicate. Yeah. Even if it's broadband, not specifically narrowband to us, it's something that we've picked up. Maybe. Is there any way we can dig in to get a little bit of the um, signature on, on that comms, something about its derivation? Maybe we could ask that. Sure. Try that. Is anything is anything we can delve into in the sort of depths of the signal? Pull out its um, sort of signature header and footer pack, sort of packages. Understand its derivation, maybe even some of the content. So that's a lot more. That's a lot more than one question. Um, okay. What one thing I can tell you? Uh, uh, well, so why don't you select for me which one thing you'd like to to know? 
All right, should we, should we start with the header then? So can we get something about its derivation and where it's from? I'm, I'm... <laughs> yeah. Are they, are they right on top of us? <laughs> no. <laughs> we cut outside, there's this giant disc-shaped ship going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So is that the question? The Where is it coming from? I'd, I'd like to know something about the um, nature of the derivation of the message. So can we understand, can we decipher from the header information what kind of a message this is and sort of something about its nomenclature so we understand maybe what type of message it is? So there's a couple of things you're asking in that same th question. You're oh. asking what type of uh, message it is in terms of the character of the message. And you're also asking about the origin of the message. Okay. Any preferences, guys? The origin would be... Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Do you think? Go to Alonso, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the origin seems very important to me. This seems to have been transmitted from Tech World. Oh. oh okay. Now you can take more active steps to try and all those other questions, they're certainly just a matter of us figuring out what skill is going to be used to try and analyze this information. So all that right. extra information you can look into, it's just, well, we only had the two questions before we start resorting to yep. dice rolls. So what would you like to okay, investigate next? See. All of those areas that you mentioned, Dane, those are all fertile areas to, to explore for, um, for gaining more information as well. Well, Dane would like to blow the message up with high explosives. That's what he does. So I'm going to pass this over to my colleagues. <laughs> Guys, I'm getting some space C4. I'll be right back. And, uh... <laughs> Come on, Boffins. Sort it out. Yeah. Um... What would you like to do, Alonso? Well, I mean, we know it's coming, where it's coming from. We know that we can't read it. It's not encrypted, you said, right? So it's not, it's not in a format that is encrypted that you are aware of. It may very well oh. be encrypted as well. What what I mean is the type of interference that you received when the when the message arrived. Um, that's not what an encrypted message would cause. Right. Maybe we can figure out the. Uh, I mean, there's two another couple of questions. Who's it addressed to? And is it just a broadcast or a sort of narrow band because I mean if this is just some weather forecast from tech world <laughs> then let's ignore it right if it's got yeah. message to the rift wanderer and it's beamed on a tight beam to us it may be of interest okay yeah sure let's see if we can decipher who it's meant for okay so um why don't you give us another electronics comms check here please <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible fire. holy smokes Jeez. you know i have a theory that everyone has their game that they're you know going to get really great roles dave it's a dnd &D 3.5 brand it's iron kingdoms uh, jeff i think we found yours now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally right. Yeah. Um, what um, what you're able to so here's what you're able to to detect. Um, wow. It is it is something that was broadcast from Tech World. It is likely using 
some kind of kludge together technology, which is why it came in the format that it did, which might include repurposing other kinds of equipment or other kinds of information. It, um, it's strange. It is, it has characteristics um, of, because you rolled so well, and I think you're into kind of this weird, you know, uh, obscure tech. There is a, I mean, once humanity went into the stars and found humanity waiting there for them, uh, and right. found, you know, space dogmen waiting for them, they realized that there was a greater hand at, at, at work here. And while those who worship um, a greater, you know, being may say it's the work of a higher power such as that, those of a more, um, uh, what would I say, more temporal mindset would see the hand of a advanced species. Now that species, there's all sorts of theories as to what they might have called themselves. They might have uh, uh, said, or you know, what what they even like the nature of these uh, these beings may have been. But one sort of general accepted term that you'll know who you're referring to is the ancients, oh. millions of years before the um, the emergence of any of the other kind of powers that uh, populate the galaxy at present. What um, what you know is that there are tidbits that, you know, uh, this hurts the, well, God must have done it, you know, theory or school of, of uh, theory when you found tidbits of technology over the centuries that were from the ancients or seemingly attributed to the ancients. You know that the characteristic of this type of communication is something that has previously been identified as being characteristic of ancient technology. Holy grandfather. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so this is, and I mean, it, it may not, if any place is going to be picking apart, um, you know, millions of year old technology, you'd guess that tech world may be one of those places doing so, but to then use it and use some repurpose, something like that to send a message is unusual. Fair, okay. So As it's definitely unusual. Yeah. So it's, it's like tech world is pushing its technology, it's incorporating um, possibly even sort of ancient uh, technologies um, and actually to the point where they're utilizing them to augment uh, their own capabilities. Um, yeah, and this this is not unheard of, but I'm not sure that mm. anyone is aware of any positive outcome that comes from fussing around with ancient technology. Uh, well, you can understand that. You can yeah, understand that. You can understand the, the impetus to do it, um, but the galactic history is much more replete with <laughs> cautionary tales of fussing around with that stuff than it is happy outcomes. Right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. That's not to say everything is like, and then your planet's destroyed. But, uh, yeah. Um, the other uh, thing you question you had is uh, whether it was addressed to anyone. It does appear to be addressed to one of your crew members. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, is it our passenger? It is not. It's addressed oh. to Dr. Sick guy stuck at a wedding. Dr. Ilias. Oh. oh. And while. Yeah, hmm. uh, the format, and as far as the transmission is concerned, it does seem to be a fairly broad, like it's not across system wide. It seems to have been in a swath to try and catch um, a certain portion, right? Like, 
if you picture the planet drifting in space, if it transmits from the surface, um, it is going to be passing, you know, uh, off in one kind of general direction from that planet and wherever it's not is going to be lost. Wouldn't necessarily, you know, go through the planet and whatnot, plus whatever other interference, you know, things there are on the planet. But it seems as if this was transmitted in a broad swath in the general direction that you guys were there. From your yeah. roles, like, you know, this would have been a very difficult thing to parse out. Um, it definitely identifies your ship and identifies uh, Dr. Ilias as the recipient once you work through all the information. Anyone else may just take this as a glitch and be like, fuck it, let's just, it's just a glitch from Tech World. You're not wrong right. in thinking that Tech World has, in, in addition to all the other technologies, it tries to explore communications technology is a big area of topic. If, if anyone can crack the uh, the nut on light speed communication, like that's changing the entire mm. galaxy. Mm. Um, mm. But if, um, yeah, but it would take some doing to in order to to crack this. And the curious thing, the final curious thing about this curious message is there is only a single word transmitted. <laughs> oh no. Okay, not two words, just one. Oh. Oh God, that's not the word we wanted. <laughs> I'm not sure there was a good word, but. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better for something like, uh, you know? <laughs> ah, let's just leave him. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Let's we'll do it. Uh, it's not an uh, audio file. It is something that has been encoded in, you know, like binary or, or some sort of easy yeah. to, to recognize uh, format. Uh, a universally recognized kind of format. But to go to that degree to end... To, to have a message that makes use of such advanced technology, but to have it to communicate only a single word, uh, what do you think that implies? Um, well, it implies a few things. One is, is that the doctor knows somebody implicitly and will know what that means if it's just one word. Um, it probably implies desperation. Um, and a lack of time. Um, if they're just going to burst out a help and expect somebody to answer, um, then um, I think that probably means that the doctor knows something about the situation which is creating that message. That's what it means to me. Yeah, there's a good chance he knows why someone would just send a message yeah. that all it says is help. He'll know exactly what the, what the problem almost is. So then there is hmm. another decision. We're going to take our mid-session break uh, right now, but one thing to contemplate afterwards is, or during that break and a decision you need to collectively make, Dr. Ilias is currently in his bed. He is none the wiser that this message has arrived. Oh man. Yeah. David, the Missing player the will be aware of uh, of this having happened, but. What message? What message? Was it a message? So. <laughs> Why don't we take our mid-session break right now, uh, and then we'll come back and hear what your characters have to think about this oh, message yeah. and what to do. Oh, so, gosh. Yeah. We... Once we do our jump, we can let the, the doctor We'll save know. it until after. We'll, we'll discuss it <laughs> after the mid-session break. So okay. uh, we'll be back in, for those listening at home, in about five minutes. Uh, moral quandary. Moral quandary. <laughs> Shit.
All right. So. Go. You guys remember to pack a uh, moral quandary on board, right? Yeah. Now this falls <laughs> under an SCP, though, according to uh, the um, Scout Service. <laughs> <laughs> so, we could picture that all three of our travelers are in the uh, darkened interior of the bridge. You've just had Alonzo provide the translation for it, provide the context for it. You've all taken in that information. Staying in that bridge, what happens next? Uh, well, I guess we should ask the doctor. Yeah. I mean, we have to yeah. go back to Tetwell, don't we? We have to go back. Can't believe it. Yeah, I don't know that any of us feel comfortable just <laughs> ignoring this. No. Never leave a Marine behind. Yeah. Has Dane been in a position where he has had to leave anyone behind before? Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah yeah having to cut your losses and by cut I mean lose yeah yeah done that before didn't like that <sighs> it was the right decision I tell myself in my sleepless nights that mm. it was the right decision so then um this is also the first day uh you were you rolling your d7 I was oh. seeing how it's that's the first <laughs> day that you guys get this message so what do you guys I mean, in better that than we've left I, I think yeah 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 okay I guess there is one um, person you do need to let know what's going on then too yes I should change his display name actually as well. Yeah. There you go. Dane, you'd better tell him. You get on with it. <laughs> no one wants to tell him. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you turned over. Oh, Alonzo, your room, I think, has been turned over to uh, Tila Toral as well. Because the, the thought was was that that gives him the free reign of the galley or like the passenger lounge and your room. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But can keep him separate from everyone else. Yeah, makes sense. So who is telling uh, the Aslan? <sighs> I mean, we don't even know what it is, do we? We don't even know who it is, what it is. Nothing. I guess I will. Okay. I'll uh, tell the Torah. We have a situation where... So you well, you contacted him over the comm? Um, no, I'll go and see him. Go see him? Okay. So you yeah, go yeah. into the lounge and he is... I think he is looking over something. He's got a, a data slate and he seems to be watching over something. Mm -hmm. And when you walk in, he... Uh, Laverick. Yes. Yes. Sorry to disturb you. Um, <laughs> we have a situation which we needed to tell you about. Um, Turns, he stands up. Yeah, we've had a, a communication. Um, My enemies. A, uh, we don't know that. We don't know that. It's directed towards the doctor, uh, Dr. Elias. Um, the request is for help. Um, now, as a matter of, and I choose my words carefully, as a matter of honor, um, we feel uncomfortable about ignoring such a request. Um, Where is the request from? 
Uh, we are operating with very little information at the moment. Um, we're trying to decipher more. It's coming from Tech World, the place that we've just left. And it is connected in some way to the Doctor's history and background. It is also utilizing highly advanced, some might say, uh, alien, uh, even ancient technologies spliced into um, some sort of communication system. Um, when you... I know you are one to not parse words, Lavrek. Mm. When you say ancient technology, you mean those who came before? I mean the forerunners, yeah, the ones that came before. It's remarkable that we received this message, particularly as we're powered down and out system. And yet this message has come to us. I'm, uh, we're all uneasy about it because we don't know enough yet about the nature of the message, but there's clearly some something that is related to the, the, the doctor's past that we need to explore. And this may delay us from our prime objective, which is to get you home. Do you feel by taking these steps that it risks exposure? We know that there are people at Tech World who want to prevent you from heading to your destination. And so any any return there increases that our risk profile. But this is a, a matter of honor for the doctor. I think so. Which we should expedite. It's the right thing to do. It is the honorable thing to do. Yes. But you need to know, and that is also the right thing to do. Lavrik, did you come to ask my permission or to inform no. me of what you are doing? I came to inform you so that you are um, aware of what we have decided we must do. There's a low rumbling growl that begins mm. uh, seemingly in the barrel of his chest. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't usually get told, does he? <laughs> really does not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what comes out is probably uh, the closest that this Aslan is likely to offer of a guffaw or a... <laughs> <laughs> he seems uh, your under explanation of it and your standing up to him seems to have mm. met with his approval <laughs> you seem to have turned your mind to this course of action You have considered then what to do with me in the interim. We feel we should continue with the strategy that has kept you safe for now. I will do as you ask and remain Thank you. here. Mm. Your candor is appreciated. You Lavrik. can always rely on that. He nods. 
kindly keep me informed. She probably would say kindly. Keep me informed of further developments, <laughs> Lovric. Yeah. He's been about of, uh, as, uh, as uh, accommodating as he is likely to be you know, at yeah. this point. Yeah. Yeah. So He's then, not Canadian. It's not going to be nice about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Canadian. <laughs> uh, Aslan. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So he goes back. You, you leave, and uh, you can assume yeah. you've informed everyone uh, of what the. Uh, I guess how do you, how do you advise um, Alonzo and uh, uh, Captain Ganny of how that went. Yeah, I'll just tell him straight. He's um, he's prepared to go along with it. He's not used to being told what to do. He um, accepts that the strategy of keeping him confined and out of the way is the is the best of not a great situation, um, and that we are, we have leave, as it were, to continue to explore what this help message means. Um, but clearly we need to be on our guard for any anything that would jeopardize our overall objectives. Mm -hmm. So I think what... Um, uh, what we'll assume uh, is that... Because uh, David had said in Discord before that uh, Dr. Ganny wouldn't hold up, or Dr. Ganny, Dr. Uh, Alias, uh, would not hold up the rest of the crew. So perhaps he was still parsing the information when you guys made your departure from Tech World. And um, he has yet to come to, you know, any kind of resolution. What he can tell you, or uh, any, any further information about the, um, whether he's heard back from, oh, so this is what he's told you, you know, I, I, I'm, this actually works out kind of nicely. Um, I'd rather be lucky than smart. Uh, you find, um, what he tells you is that there was a, uh, a local doctor uh, who he has dealt with before. Let me see here. I'm sure I've written it down here. Mm. Da, 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 da. This related to his, his, his research. Yeah, Dr. Diwen uh, Bancroft. Yeah. So he had mentioned before that he had worked with Dr. Um, Bancroft previously on that, um, on some other mission that eventually led him to selling the, you know, a hospital ship and uh, taking up with uh, Captain Ganny and financing the uh, Rift Wanderer. What, um, what he tells you is that he had received that information uh, from, like there was a, a message with a one credit uh, payment. And when he looked at the attachment to the message, there was all this information that seemed to have an unknown, you know, um, parts of his work. Basically, it was something that was, uh, how to put this? Um, it was, the way I described it last time was that it's as if it's like a torn page out of a book where he's got an incomplete, like whatever the, the biological or genetic uh, equivalent of that is where you get a snippet of information as opposed to the full uh, full degree, then that's what he has received. He's received uh, this, and in that snippet, he found parts of what was his work, things that he had pioneered in that work with Dr. Bancroft, parts of Bancroft's work, and then something else much more advanced. He had tried to uh, go back and accept the payment, but had not received it to try and find out more, almost as if it was sent as something to try and uh, to tantalize him. But he left uh, with the ship, not wanting to compromise your overall mission beforehand. You guys drifted out into space. You were waiting for about 18 hours, and that's when, Alonzo, you got this message. Right. So... That's how much he can tell you. He knows that there is a former colleague now. Um, I mean, this is not a, you know, the, the setting of uh, Traveler is not really a, like, a pulp or high fantasy setting. So to call someone an enemy is probably not really 
you know, grown up enough of a way of describing it. But he would describe this guy as his enemy. Mm. Mm. So, okay. Bancroft uh, was on there. Bancroft sent him this information. And, yeah. Then there's this message from Tech World. So, that's the additional information that you would have um, to operate on uh, in the like three hours that it takes you to get back to uh, Tech World from where you were drifting. Okay, can we run any um, sort of library data, Tech World library data on Dr. Bancroft, his um, or her? Um, his. Uh, Dai Wen his. is his name. Dai Wen. So, uh, any information on uh, the institution he's working for, um, any extraction of research papers generally in the sort of work he's doing? So, um, let me answer some of those in, in turn. For one, there is no institution. Tech World is um, anarchic um, right. science. Okay. Uh, it is everyone, so long as uh, you get the go ahead of the kind of the tech world, you know, council and uh, GDICO in general. GDICO, push the limits of science past the point of reasonableness, common sense, or safety. Um, as long as you get the approval of both of those, then you're free to pursue whatever the fuck you want on this planet. It's all about being, like pushing the boundaries of science well past what uh, any kind of controls that the Shield Church would have put on it on Gazulan. This is unrestrained, except okay. by the control council. So what you know is that he is into much of the same um, technology that, uh, much of the same areas that um, Dr. Ilias uh, was interested in, uh, genetic um, manipulation, genetic engineering, although he had uh, more of an interest in making use of uh, nanotechnology to, to make those, to affect those changes or to stabilize those changes. Kind of think of it like um, uh, almost like a, a half a, a melding of uh, cybernetics and uh, biotechno like biotechnological uh, genetic genetic manipulation. Well, that's not likely to have gone wrong. What possibly could go wrong in in that kind of uh, scenario? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. as for papers, they don't really this is a let's go back to take a look at that awesome sphere once again because it looks amazing mm. while there is the sphere here all that that spread out city that's around there and then also on the blasted planet there are different pockets of it um if we were playing in a like fantasy or gothic kind of setting this would be a planet populated by spooky castles full of creepy mad scientists we are not playing that kind of setting but that is a very apt uh, comparison for what is going on on tech world this is right. science unrestrained by any kind of uh, oversight other than other mad scientists which is to say that they don't generally publish. They are jealous of their uh, information and what uh, information is exchanged is amongst one another. So it's, it's still academic elitism and... Um... Yeah, and there may be, like, there are definitely all, all these people would likely be aware that, or at least have an understanding that to a degree there is an element of... Uh, collaboration that is necessary for advancement in it too but um if you are the kind of person who wants to go and live alone with a million robots on a planet full of mad scientists you probably have some personality and ego issues to start with so from what dr Elias tells you dr bancroft is like an absolute son of a bitch of a son of a bitch he is unethical, right. he is uh, extremely driven, and dangerously brilliant, though not as brilliant as he thinks he is. Mm. It would be a shame if all that caught up with him in some horrendous kind of a way. So shall yeah. we go deliver the mail then? 
You still have a week to, de to delay. And actually, another thing, it's probably not through. You probably traveled like 12 hours out and then we're drifting in space, okay. right? Like you're probably not. So you have 12 hours to sort of make decisions as to how you want to approach this and, and you know, uh, do research on this stuff. So that's what you, you're okay. able to find out, Dane, is that this place is... Um, you may be able to push things, you know. Um, you guys have uh, a genetic, you know, um, registry already with uh, with, with the um, the tech world kind of uh, spaceport. Mm. So there will be a, another identical, you know, service droid ready to approach you. The other thing is, is while there is a great deal of monitoring uh, that goes on here. Unless you're causing problems for tech world in general, you're still pretty much free to go where you want. So, what are you guys thinking? While I look up the law level for tech world. Yeah. Well, I guess we need to zero in, try and make contact with um Possibly and possibly with, uh, oh, I don't know. I was going to say, should we make contact with him? Um, but actually, that might give us away. I don't know. But we need to I I isolate and find him. Assuming, assuming it is him that we're talking about here. Yeah. How would we do that? Hmm. I mean, I guess, can we use the sort of communication? Uh, yeah. So a way we can set up like a spoof connection to the planetary network, which will kind of obfuscate the origin, but enable us to try and make contact, but in a way that doesn't necessarily zero in that it's us. Um, yeah, I mean, um, that's definitely something you could try. The uh, Alonzo uh, is a gifted um, electronic wizard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll us another 11, please, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just checking here. <laughs> uh, Maybe yeah. we just need to physically do it, because I'm just guessing that no. our whatever it is, tech level 12, 13 ship, if we're lucky, uh, our electronics aren't really up to tech tech world standards mm -hmm. so in here um just to give context uh li like light assault weapons and submachine guns are banned cloth armor is banned but um personal concealable weapons uh are permitted uh on the planet and mesh armor will be permitted Ooh. okay Unfortunately, that battle dress uh, is not going to be uh, permitted on your Dane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. the, 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 the polycarbon combat suit is probably right out, but mm -hmm. um, um, the heavy revolver is probably acceptable if it's tucked away. Yeah. That's a crazy, it's a crazy place. It's a crazy place. Definitely. That's my armor gone. <laughs> you did see those um, seemingly like... Uh, 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 war bots that you weren't able to identify what allegiance they seem to have been to. <laughs> so they may have been custom <laughs> uh, units for the spaceport, but uh, as far as the um, okay. security is concerned. Well, we can we can stretch to buying some, some, some mesh if we really wanted to, for, for all the good it will do us. Well, let's do yeah, this first. Let's that. see about um, Alonso setting up that um, that way of trying to communicate. I, I take it it's is it Dr. Brancroft you want to contact? Is it you can try and like figure out where the message came from? That might be difficult unless it's continually broadcasting, which I doesn't seem like it is. No. Yeah, yeah I think that's correct. Okay. So uh, why don't you give us another electronic comms check? Electronic comms is the uh, perception check for traveler. Oh, yeah, three here we three. go. Three of three. Three of three. Three of three. Oh, oh, oh. so pretty there amazing. <laughs> That's so fantastic. That's a nine. That's All right. A nine. So Alonzo is fairly confident he's got it set up in such a way that um, 
they're not going to be able to track back to you. You're maybe getting in closer and you're bouncing it off of some local, uh, some satellite that is around the, the orbit in uh, tech world. They tend to lose track of that shit as they're putting it up there anyway. So, so you have a way of uh, communicating that is indirect. But how do you wish to do so? Or what do you wish to say, I guess, is more the point. Yeah. Oh, good news, guys. I also get to make a mysterious roll for as you approach the world to see if you're searched. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, their law level is working in your favor here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like something I... along the lines of message received or something or what? Yeah. Because yeah. that's kind of innocuous if someone else intercepts it. Yeah. How are you today? We're all fine, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Boring conversation anyway. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. The rain is heavy. Come on, let's go for the full spy thing. So really, I yeah. need to roll four or less uh, for there to be... Um, an investigation for as you land. So that is uh, to give you context for yeah, what your chances are of going back here. What do you okay. think, guys? Yeah. Head back. Put the message out. What is the message? Okay. Message received. Um, message received. How are things going? And that is just to uh, Dr. Bancroft in general? Yeah. That was a thought. Yeah. Start there. Okay. So that is sent. And then... Um, it is shortly uh, thereafter, uh, maybe... 15, 20 minutes after that has been sent when you receive a reply. Hmm. I'm assuming you're leaving your spoofed connection up, Alonso? Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's the only way we know how to get back to him. Uh, who is this? Oh, uh, um, yeah. How do we... How do we answer that question? Yeah. the I can tell you, because uh, you would probably say this as well, Alonso, um, that came back using conventional comm stuff. There's no encoding. Oh, there's no other oh. strange stuff. It is the message that okay. came back. is just in conventional uh, thing through the, the spooked connection. Can we run a trace? Can we Very run a trace from the origin of the message? Um, yeah, why don't we do that? Let's, let's trace where this one came from if we can. If it's not, if it's very traditional, then yeah, and maybe we can learn more without revealing too much. So you have um, access to sensors. Let's just quickly take a look at what is available, and then we'll talk about aiding another because uh, getting some help for this might not be, if more than one of you are working on this, then that might not be a bad uh, a bad yeah. thing. Okay, so. Because you're certainly gonna be close enough to pretty much bring any of your uh, sensors on. Uh... Yes, yeah, so. I'm not sure any of the sensors necessarily would. Oh, the EM sensors probably. Yeah. Computers. So EM. Yeah, you would have full access at this point. Yeah, 
And would it be computers if you're running it through a network? Oh, yeah, yeah, but that's a skill. I'm just I'm wondering what um, what actual sensors you're using. What what sensor you're using to try and oh, track okay. this stuff, right? Uh, because the we other ones are the visual, right? thermal, active radar, LIDAR, passive radar, LIDAR, uh, NAS, which detects like brain uh, neural activity, and then the densitometer. Uh, which is like uh, I, the makeups yeah. of the stuff. I think EM sure. sensors are probably the ones. Right. I was thinking of using our comms uh, link to basically run traces of the packets that are coming to us and try and put them back to source. So using purely the communications rather than... So for the EM uh, sensors, okay. I'll tell you that until you get closer than 10 kilometers, they will be limited, which means it'll be harder, not impossible, but harder to make use of it. If you wait to send that message until you're basically 10 kilometers off from orbit, then you will have no penalty from the sensors. Oh. It's gonna be an electronic sensors check because that's what's used to typically detect and identify things. Again, not impossible. You could easily, with the, the penalty that you would take, you could do that up to 10,000 kilometers away. So it's really like there's one band of penalties that will start at 10,000 kilometers away, and then there's no penalty that starts at 10 kilometers away with mm -hmm. these particular sensors. Okay. For someone to, to figure out where the actual comms are coming from, that, that's not gonna affect your things. They'd have to beat your 12. Right, okay. So what do you think? Do you think you would have, uh, you would have known the capabilities of your sensors before you got in there. Do you think you would have waited until you're 10 kilometers away from the orbit or would you start from much further away? What do you guys think? I think we wait. Yeah. Sure, what do you guys Close think? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 it's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so there will... Uh, sorry, go ahead, James. No, 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 I agree. Okay, so then you will wait until you're in orbit, and then... Uh, 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 um. You have competent aids. So that means you're going to roll this with a boon. Who is rolling electronic sensors for us with a boon? I guess that would be Alonso again, right? Sure. Yeah, you can do that. What does the boon do again? Uh, you get to roll an at 3d6 and you take the two best. There should be a function on there for you to set it so you that's roll a, with a boon. There's a button Would at the top. Aiding, but, oh, uh, on the top? Yeah. Oh, there, yeah. Right at the boon. top. Okay, yeah, yeah. There yeah. we go. Mm -hmm. I see it. Yeah, not. we're not doing it as a task chain because there's not other stuff that people are doing. There we go. It just he's got competent aid, so that is uh, oh now Jeff, do you want to take the four, uh, the four or the four? Wow, <laughs> that is crazy! <laughs> wow. All right. So uh, what you are able to uh, detect is this is actually coming. It's being routed through the spaceport, but it is coming from a destination a, a couple hundred kilometers outside of the main spaceport. Not unusual for people to be conducting their, you know, uh, particularly the more um, dangerous or you know volatile uh, experiments or research. It's not unusual for them to be on the uh, outskirts of the city. Even right. the, uh, the council that runs Tech World is not uh, suicidal. Yeah. So you have a, an idea of where this place is now. And yeah. Was that expected, do you think? Or do you think that's unexpected that it's so far outside? I ask because you, you, whether you have given thought to what you're going to tell the tech world, um, like Starkin or um, what do you call it, uh, uh, port control, for whether you're coming to land at the spaceport or otherwise. Right. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot my umbrella, so we've <laughs> come back. <laughs> um. So that key <laughs> message comes back. Yeah. 
Um, but the immediate question is, who is this? Yeah. Yeah. Do we? What do you got? Umbrella you... Corp. <laughs> yeah. What do you think it is Captain? October. <laughs> so Should we so be... this district. Uh... <laughs> These are the people that are holding him, isn't it? Or am I, am I just being overly suspicious? I think I think he's managed to get a message out to us via rather unusual and esoteric means. And the message we're getting back now is from the people who are involved in the problem that requires his help. And I could be wrong, but I'm just cautious that we tell them too much. So then how do you want to answer it? Cryptically? Yeah. Probably. Um, Those who wish to help? You could say. Could, or... Um, here to make a deal? Yeah, but... The message originally wasn't coming from captors, right? It was coming from the person themselves. Okay. Well, I mean, normally your kidnappers don't say help. No. They'll send a message like, you know, ransom. <laughs> right. So, last thing we know then is that he was at liberty to some extent. Yeah. Or at least he was clever enough to get a message out. So, our answer And then. it may not be captors, right? It could be that something went yeah. wrong with his experiments and he's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's stuck in a lab with things gone wrong. Yeah. With all his friendly robots around him. <laughs> or not. Um, I don't know. We just, go there? Maybe we just answer a question with a question. Um, who are you? What kind? I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. Is that what no, you're going with? Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Mm. Send the message off. Who are you? Mm. There is a pause. There's a mysterious roll. Mm. God. <laughs> There's a table for that. <laughs> There's probably a table for it. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. Got a bad feeling about this. Uh, yeah, I would say <laughs> there is. Oh, uh, Jeffrey, would you give us a or Alonzo? Would you give us a electronics comms check, please? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no sweat. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's slowly going down, down, but it's still high. Yeah, it's slowly on its way down. Not so, down. Yeah. do you wish to put you have six points of luck available? Do you wish to put any luck into that? Uh, I will tell you, you know, I, I really, I genuinely dislike uh, blind bidding uh, mechanics in games. So, I'll tell you that. Um, was it very difficult <laughs> right now? No, it, it is quite difficult. Like. Um, if you spend two points of luck, you'll be yeah. able to know what's happened. Okay. If you Let's spend, let me think here. <laughs> if you spend four points of luck, you may be able to try and prevent what's happening. Wow. Well, that's almost all our luck, but what do you think? Let's do it. Let's uh, do it. Let's just do it. Get it spent. So yeah, let's spend it. 
Yeah. Metaphorically formidable speaking. Formidable it is, then. Formidable. <laughs> yeah, well, what now, ended up happening, I rolled an 11 on my on my roll to... what When you got a hit, when the doctor got the smart-ass answer back, or whoever is, is receiving this, they then made a, an electronics comms check to try and track back the message, and uh, I rolled incredibly fucking well. But with your great roll plus luck, you can see he's about to break or whatever it is that is doing this, something has a very advanced, um, likely some kind of AI assistance uh, with this. They're about to break through your spoofing. So this would be now a contested role if you want to try and either like cut the connection altogether or to try and shore up your defenses as it were. Oh, right. This is every 90s hacking movie where it's like going from one place to another place to another place to, you know... Ah, I forget the assistance rules, but can I help to uh, if we want to shore it so up? So if you have assist, if you have competent assistance, what it says is you get uh, to boost them. Um, working in like where one is building up towards another could be a skill chain, but there's not. Let me just double check here. I don't. I, when I quickly looked over, I didn't see uh, uh, like an aid another kind of uh, mechanic. We were working together. So it can be chain rules. There's lots in the hands of the uh, referee. I mean, we, we could say, I mean, we could be boon and bane. I mean, if a traveler has help, such as good tools, competent aids, yeah. or other beneficial circumstances, you could give them a boon. And that's what the, yeah, the last, the electronic sensor was rolled. I'm inclined to go that route, where you just, uh, okay. Jeff will roll it with a boon. And you can roll more than one boon. Like, there can be multiple boons in, in well, this game. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not bad at sensors. I've got a plus two on sensor. Yeah. Okay. Do you have uh, sensors as well, Dean? Uh, I actually do. Well, electronics? <laughs> yeah. Do you, great. So roll with two boons then, Alonso. Oh, beautiful. How do you do multiple boons? I Ooh. have no idea. Ooh, does, does it? Let's see. <laughs> uh, you only get boon on oh, 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 a Traveler can only be under the influence of uh, one boon or one bane during a check. Uh, okay. I'm oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it's sensors I'm rolling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Oh, look at that! <laughs> so, how do you wish to respond with this? That's incredible. Wow. Do you like reinforce the the the, the background so you can, they, the hacking can't tell where it's coming from, or do you want to set it up so it's it's making something else seem obvious? Like you could. Uh, you can be as creative as you want with that role. Well, you guys have done an incredible job. Facing incredible tasks, too. Like, this is very advanced uh, hacking kind of or tracking uh, algorithm or program that this guy's been using. Yeah. What do you think? Um, what do you think I was thinking? Like, spoofing something, maybe? Yeah. yeah, but do we, um... That's such a good role. Like you could set it on, just as examples, you could make it seem as if it's coming from another ship. You could make it seem as if it's coming yeah, from thinking. the surface somewhere. You could make it seem as if uh, it's coming from nowhere and no I'm one knows, right? I'm just like, wondering if there's an Imperial ship, uh, warship anywhere nearby that you could spoof it to. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I read that. Far outside the Graham Imperium. Has, no, saying, just that I don't think that the skill chain for these kind of things. Yeah. 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 The boon is the. I think the more. Yeah. I think uh, so. Yeah. yeah. But it is. It's, it is cool. Good to remember that it, it is a very flexible system for different ways of approaching a thing. And the skill chain yeah. rules are pretty fucking cool, without being mm -hmm. overly punishing for you know bad results. So sorry, James. You were saying. What are you thinking? No. No. It's, it, if there had been something like an Imperial warship in system to move it there, but um, probably isn't in this location. I mean, we're outside the Imperium. Outside the Imperium, and there's not a lot of call for it to come here. Tech World is a very valuable resource for Judico. Uh, so, um, Judico, we run on innovation and misery. <laughs> Mostly okay. the latter. Yeah. Well, I have a question. What do we think our enemies or those that um are opposing what we're trying to accomplish would be 
frightened or intimidated by? What do you guys think? Like what? Probably mm -hmm. tech worlds, whatever their equivalent of the police is. Right. Okay. It's all like a or I NSA like a Terminator or... force or something. Yeah. There is the council that uh, runs, like Judico, mm. um, but they, well, depends if you buy the Judico line. Judico says that their, uh, the limits of their control are at the, um, the end at the starport. Uh, Judico, we don't interfere with independent technology or independent research. We just take advantage of it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, realistically, if the funding comes from Judico, then it is likely going to be the council would be uh, have to be cautious for the degrees to which they go against Judico's interests. Okay. But yeah, the, there is a um, uh, there is a uh, like a tech council that uh, runs tech world otherwise. And if you get so your funding maybe... cut or you have to move off planet like that, that's probably um, the threat of death and you know murder or whatnot is pretty scary. But for an independent researcher like that to suddenly have nowhere to go with your research and no funding for it, that might be. Oh, scarier. I know. Reroute them to the inland revenue. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I I think making it seem like Judico or something like that is a good idea. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Do you, do you think he's found something? Uh, I mean, either he's being used as a way of luring us back. Um, How likely is that scenario? I guess one it's thing to consider too uh, is what the what the conversation or what the communication has been thus far. You sent your initial response saying, "Message received, right?" Right. The response was, "Who is this?" And the response back that you sent was, "Who is this?" And then. They initiated this scan. Yeah. In which case, you know, I suppose that the follow-up could be something like... Um, well, the follow-up will come just, afterwards. Right now, we're deciding where you want this uh, trace to go to. Right. I just wanted to give the context of the conversation thus far so you could... I mean, maybe your intent is to confuse whoever is on the other end of this as well, but just if you want to take advantage of like, well, who would be sending those, that series of messages? Right. It could be the man himself. So. Right. In which, case, in which case our response would be, we're here to help. Message received and we're here to help. Right. Those who wish to help or something like that. So it's still yeah. cryptic, but if it's the person who sent the help message, then they may... Get yeah. it, yeah. Well, yeah. That, again, that'll be your response, but right now I'd like oh. to know what the trace would, has gone. Where did the trace go to? Where did you relocate it to? Right. To your point, I think your suggestion of making it un, untraceable is what we want. We don't want to oh, we don't want somebody to else. Someone. You just want to get it so that they can't tell where the yeah. location. Yeah. So they can oh, speak I to us, there, but yeah, yeah. they know it's us, but not where we are or yeah we're, yeah, we're not trying so to... instead of spoofing it we'd rather cloak it is what we're saying yeah. It, yeah thinking about it further if we were discussing what do we want to do with the message we wouldn't have made it seem like it's coming from someone else we would try to make it untraceable because yeah. that's, that's so they that's almost can't get the ip them. address as it were the ip yeah. address is hidden given the time of year i'll and how amazing that role was too. I will give you one more uh, uh, option to, to consider. You could, in theory, have the trace end with the same type of distinctive interference that you mm -hmm. found okay. in that message originally. Sort of. Oh. Yeah. So if you're on the right. planet and you're exploring ancient yeah. technology and then you run your trace and it runs into the same kind of interference, 
Imagine how far that pit in your stomach must go down when you think that there might be something with ancient technology uh, communicating with you. Mm -hmm. True. You need not do that. Like, it could be exactly as you said, that it just drifts into the atmosphere. But a 15... Um, Right. There's is very the few things end. that will get better than that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that is what the whoever is running that trace will run into is the exact same pattern interference that uh, you had. Right. Do you guys wish to respond? You're pretty much in orbit at this point, 10 kilometers up. What are you guys planning on doing next? Do you wait for a further response from the, the surface? Do you take steps? You know where on the surface this is, and you will have to respond to um, flight control for the spaceport. We will have to follow due protocols, won't we? I think. Yep. So I think we just so. play it straight. And then zero in on the location. Okay. Guys, are we actually going to be able to make use of the vehicles rules today? Or at some point? I'm hoping so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hoverbike well, City. We can use our ship. Well, that's the thing. Uh, is, so if, depending on what uh, message you send back to the, the planet, that will determine... Um, the modifiers for the thing. If you're just going to land back on the the dome, that uh, the shaping dome, I'm, I'll just make the roll now. See if you're going to have a search. Um, modifiers for it are things like offworlders acting suspiciously. Um, that's really it. Like you're not doing anything to otherwise modify. It. Acting suspiciously might be to like registering that you're going to land elsewhere other than the starport. But that's not something that necessarily is going to um, cause, you know, cause problems uh, for you immediately. If that's acceptable, we think that's acceptable, then we want to get as close as we can. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, to keep it interesting, I'll roll in chat for the law level. All right, so where is it that you wish it? Again, it's a, a couple hundred kilometers outside of the Dome Starport out in a one of the, you know, Badlands deserts where one of the facilities is, uh, uh, the separate research facilities are located. Do you wish to land at that facility where the message came from? Do you wish to land nearby? You guys have a air car in the cargo hold for... Mm -hmm. Yeah, around. so let's land nearby instead of, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. let me tell you what the, the uh, atmosphere is like here. That may affect your... How far from the dome is it? Is it a long way from the dome? Uh, a couple hundred kilometers. Oh, it's a fair way. Okay. Okay. The atmosphere is thin, uh, which is like only one step worse than uh, Earth. Okay. So, respirators or are you okay? You don't even need a filter uh, or a respirator, actually. Uh, it's okay. just going to be a little exhausting. Uh, All right. Yeah. Like for atmospheric pressures, our Earth has a 0.71 to 1.49, and thin runs from 0.43 to uh, 0.7. So it's sort of like being at 3,000 meters. Yeah, something. exactly. It's, it's being at like yeah. a, a fairly uh, high altitude. Yeah. Sulfur Mountain. It's like living in Calgary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Up to Banff. Um, okay. So that's it. So then that would bump up by one. So it'll be a five or less for them to request an inspection. We're satisfied with that? Yeah. 
Okay. I got the feeling we're going to be in an air car with sunglasses and the blowers on internal or something. <laughs> <laughs> we have a running joke about uh, one of the PCs riding along in their roadster with an Isadora Duncan style uh <laughs> A scarf, <laughs> you know, on alternate Sundays. I, I appreciate we get to make that joke every Sunday now. So, uh, okay, then, 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 let's see here. Uh, we're going to roll for potential inspection in three, two. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> Someone uh, at uh, one of the robots uh, is apparently not paying attention whatsoever and is like, oh, come on, talking to their buddy about something and just hits an approval. No suspicions whatsoever as you no. go down into the tech world. Um, this shot atmosphere. of the uh, outer window as the, as the robot's looking at the screen and that starship just <laughs> piles past it. <laughs> Spewing yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> so... How far away would you guys like to land? Uh, your air car, I believe, is pretty darn quick. Yeah, it's an air raft. It's going to be pretty quick. Um, 200 kilometers, what? I mean, we're talking we're sort of base of about, what? I don't know, 10 kilometers away or something. Okay. 10 kilometers away actually allows you to, to make some sensor checks as well without penalty, I suppose. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, if you choose. Yeah, if we can start to zero in on what we're dealing with, that'd be great. Yeah. And I should say for the, I know I say uh, sensor in a s odd way in the same way I, I choose to say laboratory instead of laboratory, but it is just a lot more fun. <laughs> say sensor and laboratory. I know that sounds right to you alum aluminum types, but uh, for North American ears, <laughs> it sounds off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to find. Where is it here? There are vehicles in the 2022 core book, right? Sorry. They're just before the. I thought they were before the ships. Yeah. Um, yes, here they are. Here they are. One, three, six. Ooh, guys, gun skiff. That would be nice. Okay, speed. I got scared. Oh, that's, that's so Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally, right? The gun skiff? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think uh, the uh, regulations are that when you get off of the gun skiff, you have to make the Wilhelm scream. Yeah. <laughs> Speed is high for our air raft. Yeah, I which think. is between 200 and 300 kilometers per hour. Okay, so five minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Says. All right, so, uh, but as you guys are landing, what are you guys intending on, uh, what's your thoughts on um, uh, reconnoitering the place? What are you going to bring with you? What are you going to do? Um, do we have any information on the location? Any sort of public information on the area we're in? What is there around here? Tech World's How not really big on public information, uh, oh, per no, se, course, but yeah. you could try and... There's two ways of approaching this. One of them could be through like a hacking uh, kind of thing of trying to gain it with computers to gain access to information about this particular facility. Um, or you could just rely on scans themselves. Sure. Okay. What are you thinking, guys? Um, so I'm thinking, screw the law. I want to go in with all the gear. If that's possible, it depends how how much scrutiny there is. I feel out, game, out here, it? unlikely. Like the yeah. so, typically uh, there's only. Well, let me let me back up. For mechanically, like once a day, I'll make a uh, a check um, sure. to see if it you know a cursory inspection. And even though I roll that there might be inspection, you can make. I think it's admin or bureaucracy rules to try and like talk your way out of having a search done. So it's not a yeah. foregone conclusion, but yeah. that's also gonna be um, dictated by where you kind of are. There are not people racing around the deserts necessarily trying to find, you know, hey you with the fucking assault cannon. However, if you get caught with that stuff, yeah, yeah. that's gonna be a lot harder to talk your way out of and the consequences for it are probably gonna be higher as well. Sure. 
The law level is quite lax here, though, so you do have that to your advantage. Okay. Um, I guess we're going to try and find schematics and find information through through sort of sensors to start with. Um, sure. And I think we will go in. I'm certainly planning to go in well prepared for an extraction. Um, so that's going to involve tooling up a little bit. <laughs> uh, Dean goes to the weapons locker and is like, finally. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, eh? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Captain, what are your thoughts on uh, how to proceed here? Do you want to start with the sensor check and see what uh, what comes from that? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Okay. So also, um, the computers would be able to get any um, registered floor pans or anything like that. Yeah. So here's a th the both of those um, approaches run possible uh, consequences. The EM search is the one. Well, no, the densitometer search. I think the only ones that are passive are the like radar lidar one which is not likely to be particularly helpful for scanning a facility which means there's an active kind of element to the scan so the sensors are likely to give you a, a good comprehensive view because between the em scans the densitometer uh visual sensors you're going to get a good layout of what this facility might look like um but it is an active scan so it is potential that it might trigger their sensors to know that they've been pinged as it were the computers, you're probably going to get information in there too, but that runs the risk also of on a, like, there's going to be degrees of success in that. You're going to be able to get the information, but tr tweak that you've gained the information and leave a trail, as it were. Um, or if you fail altogether, that you were looking into that facility, which may result in some warning. But, uh, I'm thinking more about... Uh, looking at planning permissions and things like that to get the flaws from the you are, planning off. Again, think more Deadwood in the gold rush than any kind of modern city. There's no planning okay. department. There's no, no you know, you're going to be mm. hacking basically. It's going to be Judico and the council that will have access to that stuff, which is the highest level security uh, information. All this stuff is proprietary. All this stuff is secretive. So that's why you have to do the hacking for this. In this particular planet, there isn't, if you were on another planet like Spurl or Argona, your approach would absolutely, there would be a more centralized, less secure facility. But this particular place, is a combination of like it's a planet full of you know Dr. Jekylls and Dr. Frankenstein and whatever you know um, all working in this hodgepodge uh, of uh, of a planet that somehow has not blown itself up yet run by those same people and funded and by a really sinister you know um, multi-planetary uh, corporation oh what are we likely to find from a scan that it's got walls and corridors and rooms yeah the layout and then you also depending on how good the scan is like between all of those things em and densitometer would tell you what the walls are made of what's in there possibly what armaments might be there or what defenses there might be if there are any um the nas scan would give you uh information of a living uh how many living beings there are there i think that's the main thing of interest is who's the, how many people are there because, I mean, the fact it's got rooms and corridors is like... And these are not necessarily... Co like, you might get different information from the computer stuff than you would from the sensor scan. You could certainly try both as well. Just there is a consequence of failure from each of them. Because yeah, the surprise is probably worth more than that information. That's what I'm just thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys have any handheld sensors? Um, I think oh, uh, Densitometer uh, has been on uh, Alonzo's to get list, but everyone's been ignoring it on the whiteboard. Ever since that, uh, all those weapons were smuggled on board <laughs> that, that yeah. first trip. I just have a mobile computer or communications device and a portable computer. I don't have any scanners or anything. I'll let yeah, you guys talk to it over. I'm going to grab something. I, I, uh, something else. This was not anticipated that I would need this. Yeah, I've got a portable computer hey. for. Got very little, actually. Get wise. Tech thirteen one. Yeah, there's a lot of things I could do with that. Uh, I think. 
So what are you guys thinking? Sorry, I left you to plan. Yeah. So did we get anything in terms of our scans? Oh, is that what you're going to do first? That's the... Yeah. I mean, usually I'm used to going into a situation which I at least have some understanding about. Okay. The environment. <laughs> it's already started. Uh, 13 sessions in and uh, Dane is already started. Well, you know, when we were part of the Imperial <laughs> Marines, we... Yes, please. Tell us again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have nearly enough explosives is the basic problem. Uh, nor minions. No. So I'm just trying to find something here, guys, to give you information. Jeff, what you can do in the interim, if you want to be supervised, does um, Captain Ganny or Dane also have uh, electronic sensors? Yeah, I've got electronic yeah. sensors. So you can roll with a... I, either one of you can roll with a boom. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do that? Okay. Thanks, Captain. Or uh, Alonzo, for that matter. Look at that! Nicely done. Good. Pretty good. Okay. So what you find... Give me two moments here. So maybe... I will tell you, the one of the things I did in preparation for this campaign was to sit down and flip through just to get an idea of what's in all of my TAS books. And there's a ton of great stuff that you can just steal, like if you, in a pinch, need to find a research facility layout. There's a bunch of adventures in the TAS uh, books that uh, can very easily be repurposed for that. The trick is is remembering what book <laughs> they're in and finding it again. A more organized referee might uh, make a list of those useful things, but, um, you know. Let's see here. What I can tell you uh, the first, though, is... Uh, let's see, you rolled a 10. Do you wish to spend any... Mm, no. So here's the thing. Um... You can make a subsequent uh, scan afterwards as well. There is one... Uh, uh, there's like the neurological activity of one um, human uh, on the, in the facility. But uh, there is... There might be a second, but it's registering in a very strange way. And it's not in a strange way that it is um, necessarily reading as, like, alien. Uh, it is registering as human, like, human biological a kind of a sign, oh, but also not. Oh. Yeah, well, it, it's this, a very I mean, is, unusual yeah. result. Well, this is kind of the, I mean... It's, like, it's not a Frankenstein situation, is it? I mean, this is the sort of place where they make people and make things um, that could potentially go wrong. Uh, uh, innovative cloning is most certainly one of the areas of, uh, of research yeah. here. Well, maybe it's him then. Maybe it's a version of him. Um, Dr. Jekyll, mm -hmm. Mr. Hyde. Okay. So there is one there. Uh, you can pick up from the EM scan as well. Uh, there are uh, other... Um, robots uh, here uh, in service and there uh, appear to be two uh, like combat model uh, robots as well two sort of security things they seem to be the only ones the facility itself seems to be like a power source um, a, a living quarters and then some fabrication areas and uh, research um Facilities or research things, all in one kind of bunker-like uh, complex. Mm. That's what you pick up, Captain Ganny. The surface only does have one uh, entrance and exit. There is a uh, hangar for what seems to be a um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, like where you would park a like an air raft or some similar kind of like local transport device. Um, it would also 
outside of the hangar, it would double as a, I'm calling it a hangar, but it's really more of like a garage. It's not the kind of place where you would um, land or uh, service a interstellar craft, but it also could, the, the sort of landing platform outside of the garage could easily serve as a, um, uh, a place for unloading cargo. Because this facility is likely supplied via, um, you know, some kind of robotic um, service, like delivery drones or something similar. Okay. It is built in that uh, bunker kind of style that would survive the worst of the um, uh, of the you know, weather conditions that might uh, come here. If it's got a thin atmosphere and it was bombed to shit, it means there's probably, by the uh, Dranaxi or Sindalan uh, Navy, then there's likely going to be the kind of like, you know, Mars-style dust storms that blow around, even though it's got a quite a thin uh, atmosphere. And that would be why you would have the more, like, bunker-like facility as opposed to something more big and glass and whatnot. Also, if you're a paranoid, you know, wacko... Uh, mad scientist, this would be a better uh, facility. Uh, Dane, do you have any profession uh, skill relating to your um, your time as a uh, Imperial uh, Marine? The only thing I have which you might be alluding to is, is tactics ground combat. Definitely. Go ahead and give us a roll with that, please. That sounds perfect. Okay. Give it, we give could that need that. Um, if I can get anything to work, uh, clicking on things, um, just, sorry, you just click on the skill, don't you? I think so. Yeah, it's Did just... Did off to the left? Uh, let me just come back. Is this your first dice roll today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is actually, and... It's just not... I'm going to have to just do it the old-fashioned way. And it's uh, tactics with intellect is a plus one. Okay. Only six. Um, we got a couple of points of luck, which yeah, we could two points like an eight an is eight. your... Yeah, eight is your sort of standard... Uh, uh, your standard roll... Yeah. Um, so what you can tell yeah, so is that all our luck used then? I think that would be yeah. all the luck yeah. used for today. Yeah. yeah. Just great. I'm getting very close to meeting my year end bonus for narrative meta currency spends. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> so what this is, um, let's see here. Uh, you can tell there uh, that the two combat drones or the two security drones that are uh, on site, um, they appear to be Judico standard combat drones. They are I'm trying to find the size here. I mean, are we going to try the knock knock? Hello, we just we are just here with the delivery. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. are we just Someone called about your cable. Blazing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. All right, so here's what what you've got is know. there are two of these. This is what the combat drone looks like. Nice. Oh dear. All right. Uh, they are armed with a laser rifle, and they can fly. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, moderately armored as well. That's okay. Uh, and they're about. Yeah, they're actually they're 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 probably about man size, a little bit larger. So there seems to be two of those things that are patrolling sort of the the area around there. Um, 
you rolled well enough to know that they do have um, uh, IR sensors as well as their like the typical kind of robot um, suite of uh, sensors. They also uh -huh. tend to be networked. Okay. So. Uh, what you would also know from that is that, like everywhere else here, there is going to be some kind of communications uh, between the bunker and uh, the rest of the planet, which could be jammed, if you were so inclined. Okay. I guess we go in hard and hot. We jam the, jam the comms, try and take out the security on the way in. And um, now, I realize a rescue. One thing you're you're uh, certainly clear of. I, I don't disagree with that approach at all. Um, but it isn't necessarily the um, the just because there are security uh, or there is security yeah. there does not necessarily mean they're going to come in guns blazing or they're no. going to respond to any intrusion guns blazing. That's true. They may because like the law level is fairly low, and if they're a mad scientist working for Judico, then they've got the approval of uh, already some yeah. suspicious stuff. Yeah, exactly. What do you think, Captain? I agree. It'll just go in and it doesn't look like, you know, there's not squads of people waiting there. there... Say, these, these are effectively could just be your standard guards for avoiding intrude burglars and all the rest of it. Yeah, this is not uh, the kind of thing you would put out to, like, to put off a siege, but it's just your... Yeah, it's, it would be your standard. We, we, we could start with, hello, we're here to see Dr. Bancroft. Could you let him know that we're here? And then, um, or, you know, can you let us in, please? We could just start with a straightforward request, and they may just be programmed to, um, you know, facilitate um, that. Um, and if that doesn't work, I'll fill them full of gauss pellets and... You know they, they have work. a 50 kilometer transceiver, so you could easily contact them from where you've landed 10 uh -huh. kilometers away. Okay. Um, we could try that. We could just try something very banal, like we just wanted to check. Um, we were just we were just passing. I wanted to know if uh, Dr. Bancroft was, re was receiving callers this morning. <laughs> I think you would know as well that uh, they are at 10 kilometers away uh, it's unlikely that they would have missed your landing yeah well good so they know we're here which is I mean your characters would have known that as well so if you would choose to land further away to make your way in the air raft is very quick so you can yeah. easily cover like it's a half hour you know jaunt for you uh, or an hour jaunt from the city to to this facility anyway. Just, just think we do it. Yeah. Um, who's going in the raft? All of us. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Alonso doesn't want to miss out on the adventure. Oh no, no. <laughs> I'll mean, be uh, recording this for posterity. <laughs> well, I do know how to use a gun a little Good. bit. Good. Okay. I guess I'll wear my cloth armor need, anyway. My experience. Anchor taught me. <laughs> it's funny here. I've got, I think, let me set up in our last uh, minutes of the session here, our next uh, planet here. Go. I'll bring you guys over there. Okay. Yeah, let's use that one. Okay. Grab our travelers here. Oop, they're all around the side. Uh, Let's grab me here. Oh, right, that's what was going on. I see. Okay. You may 
pass a fallen ship as you uh, pass along uh, towards heading in your air raft towards the uh, bunker. And we'll see what awaits you, I guess, next time. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys, let's give you a decision to, time to figure out what you're bringing with you. Um, in the, gosh, couple of minutes it'll take you to reach the facility. Uh, and also, you know, this will give us this time for Dr. Uh, Ilias to give input as to any insight for uh, for Dr. Bancroft. But uh, yeah, this is where you guys are going. Meet with a mad scientist in the middle of the tech world desert. I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> this incidentally to a random event. <laughs> None of this was planned. So, oh, I love this game. Uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for uh, session 13 of our Borderland Run uh, campaign. As is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, there's also a link down below in the description of this video to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, and we have a channel dedicated to this campaign. Uh, and most of the games we run on the channel as well as most other campaigns we have on the channel and you are more than welcome to join us over there uh there's in addition to that there's some other great channels like finding a group or you know information about um, um online conventions or you know uh just dungeon uh, master advice in general lots of great people over there you are more than welcome to join us there's also a link down below to um, our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print role-playing games in North America. They have also a terrific selection of new role-playing games, board games, and card games, but they have an unmatched selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs. If you do not have something in stock, uh, they can, you can often put it on a want list, and they'll send you an email when it comes in. And if you make a purchase of $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code FALLMUSER. All one word, all caps. It's all listed down below, and you will save yourself 10% in your purchase. There's also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts at the time of recording in Ukraine, Morocco, and a bunch of other places. Um, there are uh, all donations, I should say, that go through that link, go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman, just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services and as a small way of saying thank you. If you donated $10 or more since June 1st, 2023, head on over to the Charity Initiatives channel on the Dungeon Musings Discord server and you can cast your vote for the final session of our year-long six-part campaign, The Year of Ill Omens. Donors have shaped um, every aspect of that campaign thus far and currently what we're voting on is what kind of heroes we're going to play and what game we're going to use in the 1980s. Uh, again, all donations through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel. It just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. The last thing I will say is an enormous thank you to our stalwart travelers for today. So, Graham, Jeffrey, and James, thank you so much for playing today, guys. I'm so glad to be back with this campaign again and making it go. When you thought things were bad before, we get to make things even worse. I <laughs> love role-playing games. Uh, we'll be back on the surface of Tech World in two weeks' time. But until then, we hope that we gave you a couple of hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our heroes in Tech World system are uh, encountering. And until we see you again, stay safe. Stay healthy and happy gaming. <laughs>